The King and the Juju Tree Udo Ubok Udom was a famous king who lived at Itam, an inland town that doesn't have a river. Therefore, the king and his wife used to wash in the spring just behind their house. King Udo had a daughter, of whom he was very fond, and looked after her most carefully, and she grew up into a beautiful woman. For some time, the king has been absent from his house, and so did not visit the spring for two years. When he came back and went to the spring to wash, he found that the Idem Juju tree has grown up all around the place, and it was impossible for him to use it anymore. He therefore told fifty of his young men to bring their machetes and cut down the tree. They started cutting the tree, but it had no effect, because as soon as they made a cut in the tree, it closed up again. So after working all day, they found that they had made no impression at all. When they returned at night, they told the king that they had been unable to destroy the tree. He was very angry when he heard this, and the following morning went to the spring himself, taking his own machete with him. When the juju tree saw that the king has come himself, and was starting to try and cut his branches, the tree caused a small splinter of wood to go into the king's eye. This gave the king a great pain, so he threw down his machete and went back to his house. The pain, however, only got worse, and he could not eat or sleep for three days. The king then sent for his witchmen and told them to cast lots to find out why he was in such pain. They did so and told the king that the reason for the pain was that the juju tree was angry with the king because he tried to destroy the tree. They then told the king that he must make a sacrifice in order to satisfy the juju. The king followed their instructions with the sacrifice, and then the witchmen tried their lotions on the king's eye, but it only got worse and worse. The king then dismissed these witches and got another group. When they arrived, they told him that, although they could do nothing themselves to relieve his pain, they knew of a man who lived in the spirit land who could cure him. So the king told them to send for the spirit man at once, and he arrived the next day. Then the spirit man said, Before I do anything to your eye, what will you give me? So King Udo said, I will give you half of my town, with the people in it, also seven cows and some money. But the spirit man refused to accept the king's offer. And because the king was in such pain, he said, Name your own price, I will pay it. And the spirit man said the only thing he was willing to accept as payment was the king's daughter. At this, the king cried very hard and told the man to go away, that he would rather die than give away his daughter. That night, the pain got worse than ever, and some of the king's subjects pleaded with him to send for the spirit man again and give him his daughter. You can have another daughter later, they said, but if you die now, you will lose everything. The king then sent for the spirit man again, who came very quickly, and in great grief, the king handed his daughter to the spirit. The spirit man then went out into the bush and collected some leaves, which he then soaked in water and beat up. The juice he poured into the king's eye and told him that when he washed his face in the morning, he would be able to see what was troubling his eye. The king tried to persuade the spirit man to stay the night, but he refused and departed the same night for the spirit land, taking the king's daughter with him. Before it was light, the king rose and washed his face, and the small splinter from the juju tree, which troubled him so much, dropped out of his eye. The pain disappeared, and he was quite well again. When he came to his proper senses, he realized that he sacrificed his daughter for one of his eyes. Mortified, he ordered a general mourning throughout the kingdom for three years. After arriving at the spirit land, the king's daughter was put in a fatting house by the spirit man and was giving food. But Eskal, who was in the house, told her not to eat, because they were fatting her up, not for marriage, but so they could eat her. Therefore, she gave all the food to the skull and lived on chalk herself. Almost three years have passed. Toward the end of the third year, the spirit man brought some of his friends to see the king's daughter and told them that he would kill her the next day, and they would have a good feast of her. 
When the king's daughter woke up in the morning, the spirit man brought her food as usual. But the skull, who wanted to preserve her life, and who had heard what the spirit man had said, called her into the room and told her what was going to happen later that day. She handed the food to the skull, and he said, When the spirit man goes to the wood with his friends to prepare for the feast, you must run back to your father. He then gave her some medicine, which would make her strong for the journey, and also gave her directions for the road, telling her that there were two roads, but that when she came to the parting of the ways, she was to drop some of the medicine on the ground, and the two roads would become one. He then told her to leave by the back door and go through the wood until she came to the end of the town. She would then find the road. If she met people on the road, she was to pass them in silence, for if she greeted them, they would know that she was a stranger in the spirit land and might try to kill her. She was also not to turn round if anyone called to her, but to go straight on until she reached her father's house. Having thanked the skull for his kind advice, the king's daughter started off, and when she reached the end of town and found the road, she ran for three hours and at last arrived at the branch roads. There, she dropped the medicine, as she had been instructed, and the two roads immediately became one. So she went straight on and never greeted anyone or turned back, although several people called to her. About this time the spirit man had returned from the wood and went to the house, only to find the king's daughter was absent. He asked the skull where she was, and the skull replied that she went out by the back door, but he did not know where she had gone. Being a spirit, however, the spirit man very soon guessed that she went home. So he followed as quickly as possible, shouting out all the time. When the king's daughter heard his voice, she ran as fast as she could and at last arrived at her father's house. She then told him to prepare a sacrifice for the spirit man and leave it on the road, so that when the spirit man saw it, he would stop and not enter the town. This the king did immediately and made the sacrifice as his daughter had instructed. When the spirit man saw the sacrifice on the road, he sat down at once and began to eat. When he satisfied his appetite, he packed up the remainder and returned to the spirit land, not troubling any more about the king's daughter. When the king saw that the danger was over, he beat his drum and declared that for the future, when people died and went to the spirit land, they should not come to earth again as spirits to cure the sick.